Okay, so I've been hearing about this, like, thing. Now, I'm not too sure if you've heard of it, too. It might sound vaguely familiar. It's just this little thing called VTEC. Now, Honda may not have invented variable valve timing or variable lift, but they sure as heck made it pretty dang cool. Now, the first car with VTEC actually dates back to the late 80s with the 1989 Honda Integra XSI. The XSI standing for incredible, ex ex excellent, super incredible. That's the power of love. Kimochi Integra. But nowadays, you can find VTEC in pretty much anything, from your friend's really annoying Civic SI to your aunt's old Honda Odyssey minivan. Now, this so-called VTEC is a really clever way to combine the characteristics of a low-power fuel sipper to a really high-powerful, high-revving machine. And it does this by using two different cam profiles, respectively. But if I want to make an engine of my own that uses this hypothetical VTEC technology, I'm going to need an engine that revs higher, holds more power, and is large enough to accompany all of the hardware necessary. So I spent about a week designing by far one of my largest and best engines yet. It's actually somewhat similar in design to the motorcycle engine on your first dirt bike. <coughs> now it actually isn't just the VTEC that makes this engine so special. Making a valve that opens like a regular valve without leaking was very difficult, and it required quite a lot of thought. Until I remembered a thing called Pascal's Law. If I just have a regular poppin valve like what you'd see in just a typical engine, the air behind it would just force it open, and then it would leak around anyways, and it wouldn't really work, especially at higher pressures. Now, I did solve this in the past by having the air approach from the other side, but the other problem with that is that the air pressure behind it actually makes the valve harder to open, especially at higher pressures. But that's when I realized I could make a valve that would actually seal even more with more air pressure and still be really easy to open. Now it actually does this because the valve body is a cylinder, and the top of it is actually a sealed piston that's larger than the hole at the bottom. Because there's more surface area on the top part, the air inside will actually force it closed. The force is essentially pushing in two different directions, however, because one has greater surface area, it's pushing more towards one side. When it fills with air, it's not that hard to open it because the difference isn't that great. And now the most important feature itself is the VTEC. You can see that inside there's two different rocker arms that both contribute to the intake valve, and they have their own dedicated cam lobe. But the smaller one is always connected to the valve no matter what. In order to connect the larger camshaft, there's a pin on the side here that when I push this button in, what it does is it moves the pin across, and then it takes over for the rocker arm, and it uses the bigger cam lobe. Anyways, I think I've yapped enough about this thing. Let's see how it works. All right, so I got to put on this bench vise here as a bit of a temporary solution because I can't really put it on anything else. Uh, this is just going to be a test to see if it works really at all. I've done a little bit of testing with it, so I've kind of ballparked the, uh, the engine timing. So we're going to see if the thing will run at 60 PSI. Screwdriver. Uh, I'm gonna use this as like a temporary belt tensioner, and then we're gonna see if this works. Now, if you're still wondering why I don't always just have VTEC kicked in to make more power everywhere, let me explain. So the thing with VTEC is that it kicks in at a certain RPM, or at least it's supposed to. But the thing is, when the engine's running at slower RPMs, we actually want the valves to open a little bit later. This is because we don't want pressure generating before it's at top dead center. But when the engine gets to a certain RPM, however, the air isn't coming in fast enough to generate pressure before that. So when the valves are opening later, What's happening is the engine is generating pressure in the cylinder too late. So the air is kind of just blowing in and then blowing out. But 
The VTEC cam not only opens the valves for wider and longer, it also opens them sooner, which means that pressure can generate before top dead center, but because the engine's revving so high, what it's actually doing is it's generating pressure at the right time, and then it's allowing us to get more RPMs. I'm gonna go throw some stones, check this out. Oh, what do we have here? Humongous stone? That was pretty cool. This thing is nuts, but it's just begging to have an exhaust put on it. It sounds kind of like a tractor diesel engine right now, uh, but I want to go more for like a kind of like a motorcycle's idle. I'm going to make an exhaust and this is what I'm going to make it out of. So what I'm going to use for the exhaust is just a length of copper pipe. I feel like sound will propagate through it pretty well that we can get like a pretty nice exhaust note. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so the very first thing I did is I actually JB welded a flange over where the exhaust port used to be so I can actually stick a pipe out from it. And then what I decided to do to construct the rest of the exhaust is actually just use TPU couplers so I can kind of just make a modular design. It already does produce a different sound. So I am really curious to see how it's going to sound when we run it, so let's do that. Alright, now's the time to find out if this sounds as nice as I want it to. You know, it actually sounds a little bit cooler when the timing is thrown off. Listen. It actually does sound uh, a lot more like an actual motorcycle. Oh, uh, I think something's broken. The crankshaft is uh, a little more pliable than it used to be. But uh, let's just run it till failure, I guess. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's fried, okay. I think that the uh, crankshaft and the connecting rod have now become one. All right, let's find out what awaits us inside. What's inside? Collab, what's inside? Are you trying to do a collab, guys? Oh, ooh, that's nasty. Not good. Uh, I think what we're looking at is just a classic case of a, uh, it makes too much power for uh, the crankshaft to handle but I'm surprised that it hasn't damaged the, um, you know, the connecting rod at all. There's very little play between the connecting rod and the crankshaft. It's just bent it really badly. This is easily my best and one of my most favorite engines I've ever made, but it does need a lot of work still. For instance, the first thing it needs is definitely a belt tensioner to stop the belt from flapping around and also to stop it from jumping timing. The other thing too is with the VTEC itself, uh, I really would like to make a way to uh, have it engage by itself. Now, there were comments suggesting that I use like something like pneumatics or even just using an Arduino, but I really do like the idea of kind of coming up with a mechanical solution to this issue, so everything can just be 3D printed and you don't need like an Arduino or uh, some kind of computer to do it. Anyways, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video here. If you want to see more of this engine, make sure you stay tuned. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe to prevent height regression. Jesus Christ, he's tiny! Anyways, that's it for today. See you next time.